Organize Me Radio, episode 88, Digital Decluttering, Email and Files. I'm Naima Ford Goldson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford Goldson. And today's guest is Lisa McCarg, and she is a digital organizer. And we are just going to jump right into talking about digital organizing. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to geek out about the digital aspects of getting organized. I love it. Um, You know, because everything is online now and we have our phones and we're we're always on our phones, email, all the things, things kind of get out of hand. Tell me, how did you get your start with digital organizing? Yeah. So my kind of origin story of how I ended up where I am now is I was actually a high school Spanish teacher for 10 years. And it was around December of 2019. I happened to be on a Zoom call um, with a colleague and she said, oh, I'm teaching. I'm going to introduce direct object pronouns tomorrow. I don't know how I want to start. I'm like, oh, I have a super cute story. Like, let me pull it up. And I happened to be sharing my screen at the time. And so I jumped into my um, Google Drive. I pull up the resource and I'm kind of walking her through it. And she goes, oh, my gosh, how did you do that? I thought she meant, how did you make this resource? And so I'm telling her, she's like, no, 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 no how did you find that so fast? And I go like, what do you mean? And she says, Lisa, it would have taken me 15 minutes at least to find that resource, assuming I could have even found it. I probably would have ended up starting over from scratch. She said, you need to like tell people this is possible. Um, Because in her mind, she thought Google Drive was just a horrible product. It couldn't be organized. And like everybody hated it and was frustrated with it. In her reality, a Google Drive like mine, like wasn't even a possibility. And so she's like, you need to like tell people about this. Well, that was December of 2019. Uh, We know what happened in 2020. And so in 2020, I spent a lot of that time, um, I was teaching and I taught at a one-to-one school where every kid had a device. So I was really used to being digitally organized and stuff. And a lot of teachers were not ready when COVID hit and how much they're going to have to do electronically. So I started in 2020 working with teachers through the pandemic teaching them how to organize their Google Drives. And then it has just grown from there. Wow. Oh my goodness. It, it's always interesting to me to figure out how people got to where they are right now. Like there is a story for everyone. So what do you think is the biggest um, challenge people face when it comes to uh, digital clutter compared to physical clutter? Yeah. So there's a few things. One of them, like you kind of mentioned, it's it's everywhere. You know, we're on our phones. There's phones, there's email, there's files. Like there's just so much of it. Right. Um, and it tends to get out of control really quickly, especially when we talk about emails. Um, we don't always have control over when people email us. So sometimes stuff, it just piles up whether we want it to or not. So the sheer volume of it sometimes is a challenge. And the other challenge is that it's not tangible, right? Like we can't touch it. It's not like I can look at my desk and be like, oh, I have this huge stack of papers. I should do something with it. It's It just feels a little more overwhelming and confusing when it's not physical and it's not tangible, um, especially if you like, so I have ADHD um, and some people with ADHD will really struggle with like object permanence. Like if you can't see it, like it just ceases to exist. You kind of forget it's there. And so sometimes working in the digital world is a little bit tougher um, for some people with neurodivergence. So let's talk about this email, you know, Mm -hmm. oh my goodness, it's for me, oh my goodness, I try to keep my inbox down to, you know, a minimum. However, every day I'm getting more and more and more. So for those people who have thousands of email, I've seen some people with like tens of thousands of emails. Um, where do they start? Is there, how can they get organized? What can they do? (laughs) So it kind of depends a lot on like the person's situation and all of that. But, and I will say some people like feel so bad. The record still for someone I've worked with is 160,000 unread emails. And that was, that was just unread. That wasn't all of them. And that was spread out across about four different email addresses. (laughs) So people are always like, 
I'm like, you still haven't beat the record. Um, and that person is like, fine that I share that. She's I'd be like, like oh, throw yeah, it away. Just start yeah. over. She's like, just tell people they're not as much of a mess. <laughs> so, so yeah. So where do you start? A lot of times when we jump into this, we're like, I want to fix it all. Like now in an hour, I want it magically fixed. The first thing you have to do is you've got to be realistic for some people, this email mess has been building up for years. Now, it's not going to take you years to fix it, but it maybe took you years to get into this position. And unless you're going to delete just everything, it's not going to be fixed in an hour. Okay. So you have to go into it realistically thinking like, okay, baby steps and like small, consistent actions. I'm going to get there. Um, the biggest thing is we want to try and cut down on what is coming into your inbox. And that means that we want to unsubscribe from anything and everything that we can. And unsubscribing doesn't mean it's not a valuable newsletter or emails you're getting. But sometimes if you haven't opened like the last five emails from a specific sender, and it's not like your boss that you're ignoring or something, you know, <laughs> if it's like a newsletter and you haven't read the last five one emails they've sent, you should probably unsubscribe because that's obviously not a priority for you right now. So you either need to unsubscribe so they stop coming in or you need to make it a priority and deal with them. So unsubscribing, cutting down on what is coming in, cutting down on the volume is a big thing. Um, secondly, not everything should live in your inbox. That's like if I take all the clothes out of my closet and my dresser and I put them in a big pile in the middle of my floor, I'm, it's going to be really hard to sort through. I'm not going to find matching socks or my favorite sweatshirt because it's going to be buried by other stuff, right? So we want to create some kind of a system that's usually going to be folders. Um, if you are in Gmail, they call them labels so that you can start moving things out of your inbox so that it's not so cluttered. You don't have to move everything out of your inbox, but you know, let's say you get a lot of promotional emails um, from stores that you want to keep, make a folder that's like, you know, emails from whatever your favorite online sellers or stores are, you can put them all in there. So then if you want a promo code, it's a little easier to find it. You kind of know where to go look. And those aren't cluttering up your inbox and hiding other maybe really important emails you want to find. So if you can start by unsubscribing, and if you can start, start building a folder system, it doesn't have to be perfect to start. You don't have to deal with everything. Maybe pick one little area. Like if you're a crafter and you get a lot of emails about, I don't know, crochet or something like that, make a folder for that and start with just those emails. Once those are under control, move on to a new section. Because if you try and do it all at once, it's just too overwhelming. So do you have a recommendation on maybe how much time a person should spend daily? Because when we talk about like the email subscriptions, oh my gosh, even when you don't realize you're subscribing to something, you're subscribing to something. And next thing yes. you know, you keep getting all these, you know, marketing emails and yep. promotions yep. into your inbox and it's never ending. And yep. then it just, it seems like, you know, you, they're always there. So how, if there's a person that has 10,000 of those and then going, you know, to unsubscribe, sometimes you can just unsubscribe at, on Gmail, but sometimes you have to click here to unsubscribe and then it takes you here and then edit your preferences and then this. Yes. Do you have any advice for that? Yes. Some, some senders are what I call just, they're just, I don't know if it's necessarily unethical, but they're just not nice. And it's really, it's like, edit your communication preferences. And it's in tiny gray font, a white background. Then you got to type in your address. And then, you know, like you said, there's all these hoops you have to jump through. And that's intentional um, because psychologically as humans, we are designed to be lazy. We want to conserve energy. So when we have to start doing all these little steps, our brain is like, mm, this is wasting energy. Forget it. It's not worth it. So to if that's a real struggle for you, what you want to do, grab your phone Go to like the stopwatch feature, literally time yourself to see how long it takes you to unsubscribe from an email. And you'll see, oh, that took me, you know, nine seconds or 12 seconds. And that literally will rewire your brain. Your brain's like, oh, that took nine seconds. That's really not that bad. So if you have a lot of resistance, like this is a pain and da, 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 literally time yourself because it will trick your brain and it will cut down on that mental resistance. Now, how much time should you be spending on this? This, I always say, like, in this case, not just 
they're just emails, but they're not just emails. Like it has a real trickle down effect of wasting time and energy. But I literally have, I have two timers. I have this cube timer and I have a kitchen timer I've had for years. I have two timers on my desk, three if you count my phone. Literally set a timer, five minutes. And if you sit down and you say, okay, for these five minutes, all I'm going to do is just scan through my email. Let's say I find, well, I'm just using myself as an example. I find an email from Lisa at lisamch.com. Um, she's rad, but like, that's not a priority in my life. I want to unsubscribe. If you're in Gmail, they make it really easy. You can right click on your mouse. Um, if you hover over like the sender's name, right click on your mouse. Or if you're on a laptop, you're going to two finger um, click on the trackpad. It's going to pop open a menu. Down towards the bottom, it's going to say, find emails from Lisa MCH, like the sender's name. And it'll search for every email from that sender. Then you can open one, unsubscribe. You can select all and delete or select all and put them in a folder if you want to or something. And if you don't use Gmail, just copy the address that it was sent from and put it in the search bar, search for emails from that address. Same thing. Gmail's just made it a little quicker. Um, but if you can just dedicate five minutes, you're not going to read emails. You're not going to go, Ooh, sale at target. I should go stock up on toilet. Like, no, <laughs> you're going to like put your blinders on all you're doing for five minutes is unsubscribing and deleting. You will be shocked at how much you can actually get through. So if you, and you want to schedule this, if you use like Google calendar or you have a paper planner or something, you want to schedule the time to do it because what gets scheduled gets done put on a good playlist, put on a podcast, whatever. Literally, you know, take a day, Monday through Friday, and say, I'm going to take five minutes every day and just do this. And I think you'll be really amazed at how much you can cut through. And once you get rid of some of that clutter, then you can say, okay, what do I have? Oh, I have all of these emails that I actually want to put into a folder. Take five minutes and search for emails to put into your, you know, whatever folder that you need. I like that. I think we all can do anything in five minutes, right? Yeah. And like you said, put on our, your favorite playlist. It's like what, two or three songs, you know, yeah, and then you're done. Exactly. So that's great. What are some best practices to um, help keep the inbox low? Yeah, really, you want to, and again, this kind of depends on how much email you get and if it's like personal or business or what it is. Um, but if you can... I said, schedule in some routines. So when I was a teacher at the end of the day, I liked to just go to my inbox quick, look at all the emails from that day and say, okay, oh yeah, like, okay, well that's no longer relevant because that was for something for 10 a.m. and it's now 4 p.m. Okay, great. Delete what I don't need. Um, oh yeah, I had respond to that. Let me either delete it, archive it, or put it in a folder. If just at the end of every day, just do a scan just from emails from that day. Um, and kind of deal with them. It's kind of like putting your dishes directly in the dishwasher rather than letting them like pile up on the countertop, right? It's chipping away. So instead of having to like, wow, my countertop is covered in dirty dishes and I feel bad about that. Now it's this big overwhelming chore. I just do it like a little bit every day. Um, or you can do that weekly, maybe monthly. I'd probably say probably at least weekly. If you just go through um, and just scan to see okay, oh, I don't need that anymore. I can delete that. I can file it. And it's really about having these habits and just chipping away at it little by little so that you don't end up with this big overwhelming thing. Um, and if, if that feels really hard for you, you can start with kind of like the low hanging fruit. I always think is really old emails. Um, I work primarily in Gmail and it'll let you sort your inbox. It'll take you to like the last page, your oldest emails. If you've never done this, you're going to find emails that are probably several years old, depending how long you've had your address. And it's like, mm, that email is from six years ago. Do you really need that? Probably not, you know, unless it's from like a beloved family member or something. But like, I don't need PayPal's marketing emails from six years ago. I can probably delete those. So you can always start with old emails. Sometimes that's an easier place to start if you're really struggling to like make those decisions. Okay. That's great advice. Okay. So after listening to this, I think we'll all do a little bit better when it comes to our email <laughs> inboxes, but let's talk about file storage. Um, 
what are some of the biggest mistakes when it comes to like file organizations that people might make when it comes to storing them on their computer or um, in the cloud? Yeah, probably the biggest sort of all encompassing mistake, whether you are storing them in Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox or your computer, like wherever they are, is that you are letting them all just live in like one space. It kind of like, let's use Google Drive, for example. They have the My Drive section. And a lot of people, they just, it, that's just where they are. They're just in My Drive. Well, that's like what I said earlier. To, you just throw all your clothes in a pile on the floor. It's really hard to sort through them. Um, you want to have some sort of subfolder system. Um, and again, that kind of depends on your situation, what you need. Um, there's kind of, I will call call it sort of a, like a generic system you could do. Um, it's called either para or para, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I taught Spanish, so my brain it's like para. But um, if you Google it, you'll find like para. If you Google like P-A-R-A, -A, organization method, you'll find it. And it stands for project. These are short-term things that you're working on right now. Um, area, these are long-term responsibilities you want to manage over time. Resource. Courses. These are things that like interest you might be useful in the future. So like maybe I want to learn about this or I went to a summit or something like that. And then the last A is archive. And I think it's great for everyone to have an archive folder. And these are things that like, mm, I don't want to get rid of them, but I'm not really actively using them. They don't really fit anywhere else in my system. Chuck it in the archive folder because then you still have it, but it's out of your way and it's not cluttering things. So if you can avoid having everything just in one space, um, you get yourself some subfolders. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect system. You don't have to do everything. Maybe pick one area to start with. Um, when it comes to computers, a lot of people, their downloads folder is full of stuff. Um, some stuff they need, some stuff they don't need, but they download it and that's where it lives. Your downloads folder is a temporary home. It is not a forever home for anything. Um, you want to pull stuff out of there and you want to put it someplace else. Also, you know, I am 38 years old as we're recording this. And I grew up in a time where computers died. I had three and a half inch floppy disks that died. The USB thumb ports died. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't trust a hard drive, okay? I've been burned too many times in the past. Yeah. So if you have files that only live on your computer hard drive, you are living in a dangerous life, my friend. Um, I always say, you know, what if you, if you have kids, what if they spill water on it? If you have like dogs or cats, they like knock your laptop off and it shatters or I don't know what. Um, so I do like to have stuff saved in the cloud somewhere as a backup. Um, that's generally, in my opinion, going to be more secure than having it just on a hard drive. So that's the other thing you want to look at. And People are always like, well, what, what should I use? Should I use Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive? It doesn't matter. iCloud. Pick the system that you know and love and works for you in your brain, and it's fine. Okay. So we're putting things in folders. We're creating yes. folders for our filing system. Yep. Okay. So what if you get so many subfolders, it's hard to yeah. find things? Yeah. What's the best way to structure it so you can find things easily? Yeah. So most people I work with do not like a lot of subfolders. They don't like a folder and a folder. My brain really does. My brain loves like very deep folder levels. Um, most people don't. So that's where probably maybe monthly, maybe quarterly, you do want to go through and kind of audit your folder system and say, you know, hey, is this working for me? And the great thing about the digital world it's very easy to tweak and move stuff. It's not like I have to go through my physical filing cabinet and like laboriously like rearrange everything and move stuff. It's actually very easy to tweak things. Um, and I think once my best advice to people is just start with the folder system and you'll see like what works for you and you can always change it, but until you test it, you don't really know. And always kind of look for duplicates, look for things that you can consolidate. Um, so let's say um, you run a business and you sell stuff on Etsy and maybe you have like, you know, Etsy products, Etsy marketing, Etsy finances, did it like all these different folders. 
do you want to combine those? Or maybe you actually do want to spread them out so that you can kind of see all of them. It sort of like whichever one instinctually feels better to you is the way you should go. I like a lot of sub folders. Most people don't. Um, you also want to be intentional about how you name your folders and files so that you can search for them. So that if you can't, you don't remember exactly where it is, but you know it's named like Etsy Halloween Prince 2024. And you could search Halloween 2024 Etsy and find the folder or the file file you're looking for. So file names become really important when we start talking about searching and things like that. Okay, got it. So that's a that's a good um, way to make sure that things aren't getting lost in your file folders and we know where everything is. Okay, so are there any um, tools or apps that you recommend? I know you mentioned um, Google Drive, you mentioned iCloud, mm-hmm. you mentioned Dropbox. Are there any apps that we can use? Um, anything that you like that you might recommend? You know, I am, I am kind of the person that's like a, like a brand new shiny program won't save you, um, you know, work with what you have and know and love. And that being said, I think a lot of people kind of that aren't like corporate America or something like that, or don't own a business, they sort of sleep on project organization, project management tools. Um, things like I personally use Asana. I use the free version of Asana. It works for me. Um, Asana, Trello. Uh, monday.com, ClickUp are some like really popular ones. And a lot of people think, oh, those are just for business owners. You know, those are for like fancy schmancy people or things like that. I have an Asana board for home maintenance. And in there, it's like, hey, this is the day you should change your furnace filter. Um, I live in Nebraska, so we have all four seasons. We've just winterized our sprinklers. I have an entire section like, hey, this is the date you're going to winterize your sprinklers. Here's photos and pictures of exactly how you do it because we forget every year like, oh, you know, you should check your smoke alarm batteries on this day. So a project management tool actually has a ton of applications, even if you're not like a corporate America person. And what's great about them is you can pull in resources from lots of different places. So like I said, for us, for our setting up our sprinklers for summer and winter, I have pictures in there that I've taken of exactly how it should look. I have stuff written down. I could link to a video online that shows me, um, you know, you can pull in files from cloud storage places and, you know, say there's a Canva design, you can link to it there. Project management systems allow you to have everything you need in one spot. So if you're going to sit down to work on whatever... You don't have to, oh, okay, let me open another tab and log into Canva. Okay, now let me open another tab and go to Google Drive and search and find it. You've already collected everything you need is right there in front of you. Um, and that is really handy. And most of them have lots of different views. My brain likes vertical lists. That's what mine looks like. Um, most of them have a calendar view. So if you like to look at a calendar, you can do it that way. Some of them have a kind of a card view. If you use Trello, that's mostly what theirs is, or it kind of looks like a Pinterest board like a little bit. It's kind of got graphic cards like that. So most of the time you can find one that's free, that's going to work for your needs, and they can just be really great tools to help you manage just the day-to-day tasks that you have to do as a person living in the 21st century. Okay. So these are some great tips, advice. I'm, you know, mentally taking notes and I hope other people that are listening or watching are taking notes as well. Um, One of the things I love to ask on Organize Me Radio is what's your favorite organizing product or productivity tool? I think right now for me, um, it is probably Google Calendar. Because that is like what runs my life. It's where I dump my brain. It has, you know, obviously all of my appointments, but also reminders like, oh, it's my kid's um, school picture day or, oh, it's this dress up day. Um, And my pro tip, if you use Google Calendar or any other sort of digital calendar, is like for our interview today, I had the Zoom link right there in the thing. So I'm like, don't have to go to my email and like search for it. Or if I have an appointment at like the dermatologist's office, the address, I put the address in it for there. I took um, a crafting class. I like turn a book into a pumpkin. It was super fun. But in there, I was like, here's the address. Here's the room. You need $9. You need to bring the following supplies. Like 
everything I needed to know about that event was in the Google Calendar event and like out of my brain. So that I think right now it's Google Calendar um, is what runs my life and putting all the information. Um, and then I think I'm really into this cube timer. I got this one at the target dollar spot. And you literally like, if you want 45 minutes, you set it. So that's on top and it sets a 45 minute timer for you. I don't know why it's just fun. You can find a, if you search cube timer online, you'll find a bunch of cube timers. Um, you can get really expensive ones. You can get cheap ones. I don't know. It's just kind of fun for some reason. <laughs> I love that. And I have to agree with Google Calendar. It runs my life as well. And I love that, you know, my husband and I have a shared calendar. Yes. So he can see, you know, the things that I have and I can see the things that he has as well. So love Google Calendar. Yes. One of my other things that I love to ask everyone is um, what is your greatest professional achievement? Not gonna lie, this was kind of a hard question. <laughs> um, not a good person, like I'm not a person that's good at like bragging about themselves. Um, so they mentioned kind of towards the beginning, I was a high school Spanish teacher for 10 years. And there's a national organization called the American Council of Teaching Foreign Languages. It's not really the governing body body, but it's sort of like the big national organization for world language teachers. They have a conference every year um, and getting accepted to promote at the actual conference is like a really big deal because like hundreds, if not thousands of people submit proposals every year. And gosh, this must have been 2021 or 2022. I can't remember now. Um, but I submitted a proposal with another former educator named um, Michelle Ola. It must have been November 2022. Um, our proposal was accepted and we went, we presented at the ACTVL conference actually about minimalism in teaching. Um, there's a book called The Minimalist Teacher. And so Michelle spoke on like minimalism when it comes to your teaching pedagogy. And I spoke more about like how you manage all your teacher resources and questions you can ask yourself to like pare stuff down and kind of practical steps. Um, and so getting to present at ACTVL, getting to help you know, a group that I'm just really passionate about helping, which is teachers, specifically world language teachers, because that's what I was, um, was just a really cool, cool experience. Lisa, thank you so much. I love that. And I am so happy that we had the opportunity to talk about digital organization, because I don't think I've had that on my podcast. We talked about photo organization in the past, but yeah. not digital. Um, so I'm really appreciative for that. Thank you so much. Can you let everyone know how they can find out more information about you? Yeah, you can find me online at lisamch.com. Um, and when it comes to social media, I'm on Instagram, probably more than I should be. I'm Lisa J M C H over there. So those are all the ways you can find me. Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Naima. Thank you all for joining us. Be sure to tune in next time for an all new episode. 